Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I have the Skinny Medic Pocket Kit here. This is a partnership I did with North American Rescue to come out with a really cool kit that you can carry on a daily basis as part of your EDC to have a trauma kit because you never know when you'll be the first responder. I say that in every single video. This could be a classroom, an office, or out the range. You truly do never know when you'll be the first responder and a kit like this could save your life. So when I first came out with this kit, I caught a little bit of flack from it because I called it a pocket kit. Obviously, I know this is not going to fit in a pair of blue jeans, okay? But what there are places you can carry this. You can carry it in your backpack. You can carry it in your purse. You can carry it in your laptop bag. You can carry it multiple different ways, even a pair of BDU pants if you're on duty, things like that, or you're training. This will slip right down in there. So you can use this. This is an affordable trauma kit that's going to save someone's life. So this kit would definitely fit in something like this laptop bag, the side pocket here. That way you could have a trauma kit at your office while you're working. You don't have to have a big bulky IFAC. This will fit right in your laptop case here. So here's a pair of true spec pants. This is something that you would wear at the range while you're training, things like that. The skinny medic pocket kit will fit down in this BDU pocket. Here's a pair of the 511 EMS style pants so they can pull and you could wear your trauma kit while you're on duty. Obviously here we could be simulating a range bag, backpack, school backpack, um, a day pack, things like that. This skinny minute pocket kit slides in perfectly. So take a look at the overall size of the kit here. Looking at right about seven inches or so with a flap, maybe eight inches with a flap open. So that gives you kind of a rough estimate here. It's about three inches by about maybe four and a half inches. So gives you some rough dimensions on it. This kit comes in this sealed plastic bag. It's sealed airtight. Of course, the moment you open it up, it's no longer sealed. But nothing's going to expire in here, so you should be good to go and open it up. And it's what I would recommend. If this is going to be your primary kit, I would go and open it up. Because under stress, you don't want to have to be worried about trying to open this up, get everything opened out of the package under stress. Now, this is your secondary kit or this is your backup kit. Yeah, leave it just like this to keep it nice and organized. But you can go ahead and open it up, have everything ready to go, ready to deploy. Because under stress, you may have a hard time opening this bag up. So we do need to open it up, obviously, get to the contents, but you can take a notice here. It does have an expiration date. Nothing in here technically should expire, but they have to put an expiration date. So it's got a little pull tab here. You can see the little notch in it. This is going to help us open it up. And then there's the package opened up. So let's dump everything out and show you everything that's in here. Of course, the first thing we'll take a look at here is the cat tourniquet. This is the brand new Gen 7 cat. So there's a lot of trouble right now on the internet with fake cat tourniquets. So you're buying these Chinese stuff that's gonna break the moment you go to try to put stress on it. So you know you're getting a real cat because obviously this is kits coming straight from North American Rescue. So you don't have to worry about that. So this is a brand new cat tourniquet. So the tourniquet's obviously something we're gonna use for massive bleeding, like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of blood. And this goes on the arms and legs. Now there's two school of thoughts about where to put the tourniquet. One says high and tight. The other one says uh, three inches above the wound. I generally tell people to put it high and tight. That way you know you've got everything covered and you put it high and tight. You put this band on like you were going to cut off blood flow. Pull it super tight. And then you turn this until the bleeding is stopped. Turn your windlass here until the bleeding is stopped. And then you can put your timestamp on. And you can leave a tourniquet on for several hours by any kind of neurological damage, things like that. So it's good. So tourniquet is a must have. And it's ready to go, ready to be deployed. Having a good pair of gloves, PPE, is going to be important. There's going to be blood, obviously, all over the place. And so you don't know what they have, and they don't know what you have. So a good pair of gloves is very important. These are going to be nice and thick gloves, so you don't have to worry about them tearing or ripping on you. Mm -hmm. That's going to protect you from the blood, things like that. Now, the cool thing about this 
is sucking chest wounds. Now, I just did a video talking about hyphen chest seals and the halo chest seals. If you have someone who has a sucking chest wound, one of the first things we can do is put pressure on it and that will actually help seal it. Another thing is with bleeding, you can put direct pressure on it. Grab someone's arm and try to hold pressure to get bleeding to stop. So this having this barrier device is going to be helpful. Another item in here is the North American Rescue Compressed Gauze. Now this is not hemostatic agent, this is just gauze. It's got a couple different tear points as well. So we open this up and it's a sterile cloth here. Now you could obviously wound pack this. So you could put this down into the wound. You could also just hold it like a traditional bandage. Like if someone's bleeding, you could put this right on top of their arm or their leg or their forehead, wrap this around their head, wherever they're bleeding and use this as a traditional gauze. You don't have to wound pack it, of course, but you could just use it as a traditional gauze. Someone's got a head injury, they hit their head, they're bleeding because head injuries are gonna bleed pretty good generally. So we can control bleeding with this. We can wrap it around their forehead, things like that. Another item we included in this was the four inch trauma dressing. Has some tear points in it there again, so we can open this up. This is pretty similar to the Israeli bandage that people might be familiar with. Then, we just, it's just a big fancy ace bandage, honestly. That's, but what we can do is put our wound here, wrap this around, pulling it tight to get some compression out of it. This is a compressed bandage, so we could really get some pressure on a wound to help control bleeding. Uh, abdominal injuries, we could work with this. A chest injury, like a flail chest, things like that. All can be bandaged using this bandage here. So to try to be cost effective, I did not include chest seals. My thought was, is if you had someone who had a sucking chest wound, you could use the gloves, put pressure on it, things like that. You could also use the packaging here to help try to seal that chest wound until you get a better trauma kit to you. This kit was designed for that in mind, that this was not going to be an all-inclusive, perfect trauma kit. This was something that I wanted you to carry on a daily basis that would provide help, stop the bleeding, until a good trauma kit could get to you by your side. So this kit wasn't designed to be the perfect trauma kit, the all-inclusive trauma kit. What this kit was designed is something that you would carry on a daily basis and would stop the bleeding. And I believe this kit does it. So something else you could look at doing, let's say you have this pouch here. This is your tactical cool pouch. It matches everything else you have that's tactical. So you just need the supplies to go in here. Well, you could buy the Skinny Medic Pocket Kit, open it up and put all the supplies in here and you have a trauma kit ready to go. Thank you guys for watching. You never know when you'll be the first responder. It doesn't matter if you're in the classroom, you're in an office or you're at the range. You truly do never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember, need the right gear and the right training. This plastic material here is really thick. So there again, you could tear this open. I'm not strong enough to even tear it. There we go. I should probably put some shoes on if you want to see my feet.